All right, hello everybody, and welcome to our. Well, it's not live. Dang, our live this enough. time not live episode of AMC Seller Real Talk. My name is Curtis Johnson, and um, I am joined with the infamous Danny Coleman. I am here. Are, are we going by Dan in these days or Justin? Yeah, no, nope, by Dan. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to Paul for that can whole yeah. confustication. <laughs> I know. I know. Speaking of Paul. We have someone as a guest today who we're really excited about. Um, uh, let me introduce, uh, this is Lauren Petrullo. <laughs> oh, it's a good guest. Well done, well done. Yay, I did it. Say hello to everyone. Ciao. Beautiful. And um, so we're going to basically talk um, a lot about marketing, I would mm -hmm. say, because um, this amazing woman right here is, uh, we're going to cover your story for sure, because you have a very... Uh, unique background when it comes to I, I love how I'm telling her that she has a unique yeah. background <laughs> um, but yeah so why don't you give us a little bit of um, your background because Amazon sellers obviously uh, will see how it relates to your expertise in the field so give us a little whirl take it away Okay, well, um, I'm here in Florida based out of Orlando because I actually did marketing for the Walt Disney Company and I was a part of their in-house idea agency where basically I was a big kid with big budgets and got to blow things in a world of like, what if? Like, what if we transform Cinderella's Royal Suite into Elsa's snow getaway? Things of that nature. And then um, pivoted to a lot of lead generation, a lot of uh, digital marketing assets, demand generation and interruptive marketing. And I've eventually evolved into also being a fractional CMO for a lot of brands, including Amazon brands. Yeah, why don't you define what a fractional CMO is, just in case. And interruptive marketing. Because yeah, I'm a little that curious, was, like, that was also a good one. We <laughs> interrupt <laughs> your life to tell you about this thing it's you probably want. probably not very yeah. far off. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, so a fractional CMO is when you have the chance to get an executive level and executive experience for marketing at a fraction of the price. So instead of hiring a freelancer who knows a little bit of some stuff, or hiring a full-time digital marketing agency that knows a lot about a little things and sometimes throw pieces together. Mm -hmm. You have um, a single person that acts as both like project manager, HR, aware of what's being trending in marketing and stays on top of all the technology updates. So you, the boss, don't have to. Cool. That's that's quite something. That's like, uh, I, how does Paul afford you? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of high fives. <laughs> That's right, high fives. Well, and um, to fill in the blank of who Paul is, Paul Barron is someone we've worked with Quite and a bit. are going to do a lot of work with yeah. him. And um, he's a successful Amazon seller. He Definitely. works with you, right? Um, which makes him more successful. Yeah, which is why he's probably <laughs> exactly. successful. In fact, we nice. probably should not work with Paul at all and just work yeah. with Lauren, right? <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, Paul, for everything. Thanks for giving Lauren to us. Hi, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but really, it, most people who have been around the Amazon community know of Paul because um, he's goes he's, on stage. He goes and on stage. He yells at people and <laughs> <That's> stuff. <laughs> Stop talking! Stop talking! <laughs> Interruption marketing or something, right? Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you've worked with brands. You're familiar with uh, kind of the landscape. Um, but I, I, I didn't. Did we cut you off on kind of like your story there? I feel like we did. Um. I don't know. We can say more on my story. <laughs> Go I for mean, it. okay. So uh, I created a digital marketing agency and then um, started offering packages where people can borrow my brain because I have a design thinking background. I was an innovation producer for the Walt Disney Company. So there's a little bit of creativity that mm -hmm. happens inside this crazy a head of hair. A little bit. <laughs> and um, other things in my background. Uh, I speak several stuff. languages. That's fun. Yeah. Well, how, many okay, several? How, how many languages is several? Because that's five very, and a half. Five and a half. One is American Sign I've, Language, yeah, so hey, I give it a half. Ah, uh, okay, that's because it's still that's English fair. based. Yeah, 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 yeah that's definitely. Fair. That's fair. I I speak three quarters of one language myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm illiterate, so there's that. You know, <laughs> whatever. No, um, so obviously that kind of makes sense. Why you know <laughs> you might be qualified to talk about marketing a bit. So, um, Amazon landscape marketing what are i guess paul paul definitely f at least in my world mm. uh is known for doing unconventional yet brilliant things in amazon and i feel like that's all you is that true oh, i would never say that it's all me i think paul and i have a lot of similarities in our creative skill sets yeah um i think paul has a unique um, application of having so much background in Amazon and my background is definitely off platform and mm -hmm. so we combine together to have a really sweet merriment 
Um, and there's sometimes a lot of stuff that we throw at the wall. A lot of things that Paul will say like, let's try this. And then we'll come back and be like, resources and budgets and time say, we can do all of this. Right, and mm-hmm. also we're leaving out his, you know, amazing wife. So yeah. between that's where I was the going. Like, you guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, and, and that's where it's kind of not fair. And that's, you know, that's why we wanted to talk to you, why we're gonna be talking to Paul and Rochelle later. You know, we're gonna, you guys do things that most sellers don't do. Mm-hmm. And I think we wanna just cover maybe a couple of the highlights, mm-hmm. um, some things that you think would be smart strategies or simple strategies too. Does that kind of, does that, that sort of work? I think they're simple. I just don't think they're often executed on because it's a scary, it's not Amazon or yeah, it's right. not obvious. Well, let's face it. The, the, the way things are going is that you need to be doing things off Amazon to be more successful on on Amazon today. It's not as simple as creating an automatic PPC campaign and tra la la. Yeah, it's not 2015 anymore. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and and that's a very, you know, everyone kind of says that, but it's very true. We were talking to someone, another Lauren, funny enough, earlier today. Now I say earlier today, and that kind of gives away that neither of these two podcasts are actually live Last week when we released something. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, and she's from uh, Riverbend, and they basically help people unlock their accounts and get ASINs reactivated when they've done something stupid that they wouldn't necessarily think was stupid. So sure. I would have liked to have been there for that, but my wife was there. So yeah, she's the one that she's like, my wife is my you, if that makes sense. It she's doesn't, the br- but okay, I know good. what you're trying to say. Sense. She's the brains behind the operation. Okay. Aww. Yeah. That, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I, I am the face and she is everything else. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, one hundred percent. The reason I brought that up is that 100%. we're outside of the realm where you can just do one or two things right on Amazon and right. have a thriving business, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So um, maybe we start from the simplest. The simplest. <laughs> yeah. At okay. least what you think is the simplest. Um, I think what's the simplest, but also the biggest bang for your buck, because there are simpler items. Mm-hmm. But um, as I was alluding to earlier, having a Google My Business, owning that knowledge graph on the right side of the screen for Google is massive because yeah. you're telling not just the world, but Google and the owner of these algorithms that your brand exists. Right. And yeah. all it takes is going to like business.google.com, entering your address and waiting for a postcard to come with five digits. Yep. Within a week, you can have that listing, which opens up a whole yeah. bunch of stuff that validates you as a brand and not as an Amazon store. Fun fact, you're also going to get uh, um, Google oh. PPC <laughs> credits, yes. like 50 bucks if you spend 50 bucks, 100 no, bucks if you spend... it's like $300. Oh, well. Nice. So yeah, you get free ad credit. Um, yep. It's a match program that they give you on the platform. But you also get a free website. Yep. Um, so you can site. start ranking Jeez, your products and your keywords outside of Amazon, which helps visibility because then you get to own, if you're using paid ads, Amazon may also be bidding on your terms. So you'll be showing up and it's just owning that first page of results. As a little point here, <coughs> I want to make sure that people know, Do if you've got an existing website, don't copy paste the content from your existing website to your Google My Business site. You need to have fresh content. Otherwise, it's considered duplicate content by Google. Just a little thingy there. Is that accurate? I will not say it's completely inaccurate. <laughs> I would say there is a there is a challenge with duplicate content, but there is you know so much in the world that's out there, and there's only six ways that you can say like yeah. ketchup is red. Right. Um, but ketchup at the same time, if you're going to do the amount of keyword density that you have on your site is more important than the like the unique variables of your content. So okay. generally, you want to make sure anything that you have for the Google world has two to three percent keyword density. So you don't want a product listing on any page, similar to what you do on Amazon. You don't want to have one keyword right. every 1,000. You want a two to sometimes 5% if it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But you'll use long tail keywords and other things like that. But you can take a lot of what you're doing and sure. sh- juice yeah, yeah. it around a little bit. The duplicate content, it's really bad if you're copying and pasting within a seven day period. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay. Okay. okay, fine. But okay. point being is that it's it's a strategy that, yeah, most people are not utilizing. It's not even a strategy. It's like almost like a business fundamental more than a strategy. Yeah, yeah you yeah. wouldn't know about it as an Amazon seller because you're not a local business. Right. Yeah. But the thing is, even if you're not a local business and you don't have a physical brick and mortar, maybe you work out of a P.O. box, you can hide your address. Mm -hmm. I would send that card to your home. So it's a home-based 
business, mm. even though you do have a PO box because you can't use a PO box yeah. for Google My Business, but you can hide your address. You will also get solicited from people that'll say, oh my gosh, you're new on Google My Business. We'd love to do your ads for you yeah, right. and tell you all the reasons why your website is ugly. Right, and how terrible you're doing it all. Exactly. But uh, you, you gotta know. start somewhere. Yeah. Fair. One is bigger than zero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's, and it's not even like complicated. Just literally do those couple things that she just said. And then it just, it just increases your visibility yep. across the board. Really you literally nice. own the right side of the desktop page for Google yep. when someone looks you up. And the worst thing that happens is when you have, so shoppers are now starting to look at uh, the brands and considering purchasing them off of Amazon because there's a whole like, oh, Amazon is icky and gross not the large population, but there are still individual consumers that are doing that. And right. if you don't show up when someone tries to Google you, it's kind of like, are you an American brand that I want to support? Absolutely, I've, I've done that before. I've definitely looked for someone on Google and gone, well, okay, then I know you, all you do are white labeling this thing or whatever, you're not, a, yeah. like I, there have been times I couldn't even find a company name. Yeah, it definitely delegitimizes you. I think I threw, I, it's it's definitely a great way to guarantee that someone thinks twice at that point. Yeah, it, yeah. It's also going to affect your sale though. If you're looking long term yeah. and avoiding that, then you're only paying attention to the five p.m. cash out versus the five year sale. Right. And it's literally Ooh, go to five uh, p.m. cash out instead of the five year sale. I know those were really fancy. Yeah, yeah thanks. That, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so I should just finish here. Yeah. Podcast yeah. Uh, well, that's all we have for today. No. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. I mean, in an hour. I mean, next week. <laughs> um. Well, that's a that's a really useful strategy. Again, not a strategy, but it's yeah. But like whatever. It's it's a great way to guarantee that when someone looks up your business um you exist yeah and i guess it probably is one of those things where it depends on what your product is on the degrees of importance on that like if you have anything that's got any kind of price tag you're definitely going to want to do that where if someone's buying like a battery maybe they might not i would still argue you still need to google my business i think that no i and i definitely agree all i'm saying is that like you are making a gigantic mistake if you have a high yeah. ticket yeah. item yeah yeah, yeah. Definitely. Or even if you have a if you have an item that is like one of 7,000 other items, you're white labeling the same thing as 6,000 other people that are ranking higher or lower than you. You want to show up that you are a brand. Let me ask you something. It. I'll take my, my own case as an example. So Danian Enterprises is my company, is my corporation, right? But we have uh, one, two, three, four uh, Amazon seller accounts. Mm -hmm. One of them's handmade. One of them just sells vitamins and one of them sells outdoor stuff. Each one, and I've got multiple different brands, right? So would you suggest, I already have Danian Enterprises on Google My Business, but I didn't bother to set up the other uh, brands. So it uh, doesn't matter what they are. But so I've got basic, let's just call it three brands. Okay. Should Would you suggest that somebody like me who has multiple brands, go ahead and set them up as businesses? I know that you can do I that. I wouldn't if you don't have another address to send them to. Okay. Because you want to have one business out of the same address. You can get delisted on Google My Business. It's one of their policy items. But yeah, ultimately you do want to have all those different ones if you have other addresses that you can send them to that are not a PO box. Okay, good. So that brings up a good point in that if you if you don't own multiple homes that you operate out of. <laughs> or you have office, to, In other words, in order or, to really make that work, you have to have different houses all over the place. Yeah, so go ahead and buy houses all over America or whatever country you happen to be in. And yes, everything's going to be great. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not saying that strategy. you should great do this, strategy. but I know other people that have borrowed their friends' homes to get their second listing because you can have multiple listings for the same business and have yeah. just different locations. So I'd be like, hey, Dana, you're not using your address. Can I send my brand a postcard to your spot? Now I'm showing up even stronger locally there because mm. it it's a great localization SEO tool, um, but it's also like Alter a necessity yeah. to show up as a legitimate brand. Alternatively though, I could go to UPS or FedEx and get a suite number, right? I don't Ooh. think you can. I, it, that's, I would think that's on the same lines of PO Box because you can't do it if you like rent an office in like a WeWork space unless you have a dedicated office with signage. Oh, well, wow. that's the thing. So FedEx and UPS, they give you a dedicated suite number wow. at that address. Yeah. Oh, I learned something today. Hey, I helped you. There I feel you really good yeah. about this. I thought this was really going to be a solid one way receiving oh. straight here. <laughs> No, that's it. That's the end of his contribution. Yeah. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's no. the end of this podcast. <laughs> and I'll be in the next one. Yeah. yeah. 
I wonder how many times we're going to end this podcast in this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Fair. But I do want to give one, if we're a little bit over with Google My Business, one strategy yeah. that yeah. you can do once you set up the Google My Business account. So you get your postcard, you validate yourself because you're created, but until you enter the five digits that you get from the postcard, you're not, you're not actually verified. Yeah. You are live, but kind of. Yeah. You're, you're like not a real. whisper. <laughs> right? <laughs> Um, so when you do have your Google My Business account set up, I would recommend just put two hours. You can put that you, your hours are 24 seven because you're an online business. Right. You can list all of your products. So it's like you have your own catalog on the Google webs, mm -hmm. which is where most search traffic happens. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and then you can put in some information about your mission, your vision, your values that you know make people feel good about why they're buying your version of a white labeled product. And then the specific Amazon strategies, if you're doing Amazon posts, copy and paste what you're putting on those posts and schedule them into the Google My Business posts. Mm. Because while they say they don't help with ranking, they do help with visibility. And when you have visibility and you have people interacting with it, then it's gonna increase your relevance in the Google algorithm and increase your ranking when you're gonna show up so that you can dominate the search page results, not just in Amazon, but in the interwebs. And then the final like little bonus item is once you set up Google My Business to yeah, my, my little bonus. Like, really twist in that night. Yeah. <laughs> Stand out from your competitors. Um, you go to Bing Places. Yeah. And so you just literally click one button, import your Google My right, Business listing, right. and now you're showing up in Bing. And if you have mm -hmm. a Spanish speaking audience buying your products on Amazon, WhatsApp search engine is based off of Bing. Oh, wow. really? And oh, no one that. is on Bing. Everyone neglects it because they think of Google. So yes. it's a little three-pointer yeah that was a terrible example please <laughs> say you weren't on my video camera you were, I was fully on you <laughs> yeah. I even like figured out a way to zoom in no oh. yeah we're gonna we're gonna cut scene that a few times where it just zooms in on you doing this over Korean over like yeah. we're literally <laughs> yeah we're gonna do that just over and over and yeah. over I'm just gonna look if like nothing a else it'll be just on a it'll be in an Instagram you know story it'll yeah. be great it'll be yeah just make it a sticker yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be awesome. It'll be um, three stickers, I mean. <laughs> it'll be a fridge magnet for sure. All right, next subject. Next <laughs> subject. So <laughs> Now I want to end the podcast. It's too late for that. We're on a roll. We're so committed. You Google, know, Google My Business. Google My Business. Done. Very, very good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, what's okay. next? So, yeah. So, what's another, you know, we could also talk a broader topic okay. if you want, meaning like a broader topic in that it doesn't have to just be a strategy, but like maybe even just a broader observation you've made just about direction of marketing, marketing in relation to an Amazon business, anything in that category, whatever you want. We're, hey, we're, we're here to serve. Yeah. We do nothing but- I literally don't know what we're talking about. I'm just listening. Go ahead. Okay, uh, just create something <laughs> general, something that, well, this is, okay, so this is a conversation I got pretty deep into yesterday. Most Amazon yeah. brands will start to create Instagram platforms or Instagram channels mm -hmm. so that they can post about their products. If you don't have one yet, you're probably going to want to own that username. Yeah. Similar to Google My Business, you want to get your business name and own all the business listings. Like for our brands, we have 267 different places that we can submit their brand to. And Google My Business is one. Mm -hmm. Whoa. They're free directory listings because if someone, especially when it comes to the sale, if you don't show up on business, Better Business Bureau, if you don't show up on Yelp or if you don't show up on Google, I mean, Google's the like, if you're not doing that, that's a little embarrassing. But, but the you have to realize, I, I think I think it's funny because we've kind of come to realize this recently mm. that um, most sellers who are successful out there only really are doing a couple things professionally. Yes. So it might be that they've mastered what, like keywords, PPC, mm -hmm. things of that sort. And when I say PPC, I only mean Amazon PPC. Right. Yeah. yeah, so when you're talking about some of these things that you would think, oh, these are a given, I pretty sure well they're given now they're, you've yes. been told you've learned that's yeah. right yes yeah. exactly so <laughs> yeah i wouldn't say my full list of 250 plus business directories is a given because i know marketers that have been in the space for 15 20 years and they don't even do that yeah but the google my business is yeah for sure uh, everyone should know about that and um but let's let's talk about uh the next thing because google my business absolutely yeah. truly wonderful um, what would you then do? Once you've got your card, you've verified, you've added your information on there and it's live, mm. what would you then do? 
Have your VA copy and paste your Amazon posts and just put them into offers or like put them as posts they expire every seven days. Okay, so we're talking about social media marketing yeah. effectively. Yes. Okay, good. So and then in that realm of social media marketing, assuming you have an Instagram mm -hmm. page, it's the same content. If you have your Instagram post, just literally copy and paste it. That duplicate content doesn't matter so much. And while Facebook and Instagram are not yet search engine based social media platforms the way Pinterest is, right. mm -hmm. it's still going to be useful for you to show up and have that visibility So let with me little effort. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Do now Instagram is definitely the way to go because it's photo based, mm -hmm. but do you recommend that people have that content automatically go over to their Facebook page as well? Because if you're going to create an Instagram, you'd better create a Facebook. And if you're going to have, if you're going to post, you don't want to be going to eight different places every time you want to do a post, right? So obviously you can get a VA, like you said, a virtual assistant for those of the, you that don't know. Um, and you, but you can also hook up things so yeah, that it daisy chains along the line. you can use social media platform tools like Loomly or Agora Pulse. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they have the opportunity for you to post that same content and syndicate it across a variety of social channels. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, where Instagram is, it's photo based. Uh, I would n not neglect doing the stories, and the mm -hmm. stories one is the easiest because it's a picture that has the copy on it. So then you can post that picture on a YouTube, uh, on a YouTube story, on a Pinterest story, on a Snapchat story, on an Instagram story, on a Facebook story. Okay. So that's literally like just upload, 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 upload. If you don't want to pay for a program that's like 30 bucks a month to do all that social syndication. Yeah, okay. and, and here's, I think, probably the big thing that a lot of guys are going to be thinking right now. They're like, yeah, this is great. Awesome. Cool. I'm totally going to get to that between the hours of two in the morning and four in the morning. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> fair, that's fair, exactly fair. exactly what I'm going to Now, but I'm not saying that it's any less relevant, but what would you say are the best solutions to actually make this strategy a reality for someone like that because a lot of amazon guys unfortunately haven't really started leveraging uh agencies or or virtual assistants to the way that they or to the way or extent that they really should be yeah doing. That, that we're we're included in that so jade was the one that was running our social media and she spent an enormous amount of time mm -hmm. on researching what to talk about now we were doing oh. social media on vitamins mm -hmm. right so she's not a, I don't know, what do you call a nutrition a expert? Nutritionist? Yeah, yeah, no, she's not a nutrition expert, but I'm talking about the one that makes the vitamins at vitamin Chemist? knowledgeist. Yes. <laughs> Vitaminologist. Yes. <laughs> New job. So, so she did. <laughs> you can see why I'm not the brains behind the operation. No, uh, no, no, no. That was definitely a good use of the English language very well. <laughs> yeah. It was three quarters term. of it at least. Yeah. At least three quarters <laughs> of the English language. That, well, that was Latin, if you can believe it. Um, but uh, so. She spent an enormous amount of time just trying to figure out why, what do I post about? Now I have to go and read about that and find an article that actually sounds good. Now I gotta find the reference articles and so on and so forth. So I completely forgot what my whole point That's was. That's fine, I remember what the point was. So good, good. But this the, is why we so do this and together. I'm not just doing this as like a opportunity for you to shamelessly plug what you do. Oh yeah, that was the point. But, cause the I'm time. sure that there, you know, there are people who would in a heartbeat, want to hire someone like you to help with those strategies. But what are a couple different things that someone could do to kind of, yeah, dive in? I mean, it's, you have to think of, are you caring about your social presence from a vanity perspective or for preparing for when Instagram and Facebook becomes a search engine based social media platform? Okay, let's talk about that a little bit more yeah. because that is literally something that is- Not been said before. Totally a new concept yeah. for me at least. Yeah, so. me too. Well, so Pinterest is the hybrid between a search engine and a social media platform. Pinterest, we're, we're agency partners, so we get from our partners every week what is trending. So last week there was a lot of stuff trending on um, back to school backpacks and um, stuff in like high school education. It was really strange the week before that it was Halloween weddings, um, but cool. they, tell, they determine that because people are typing in what they wanna be inspired by. So something that we do is that we take, so on, we call it a Monday morning scrum or content scrum. We take the insights from Pinterest because Pinterest is about 60 days ahead and we see what's trending on Pinterest. Ahead 60 days ahead of everyone else. Google. Yeah, because you have um, purchase decisions are much further out on Pinterest. They're looking for inspiration okay. to buy in 60 to 90 days from now. Right, that makes sense, okay. So Interesting. we look at the, we in our content scrum, it's-, it's I'm such a dad, <clears throat> all that came to mind was 
Pinteresting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I didn't think of that. That's, that would I know, be something that's literally I do. something you would think. Yeah. About. Yeah. I uh, I formally apologize to everyone who just heard. I that. don't apologize to anybody at all. You deserved to hear that. <laughs> Well, Sorry, you were saying. No, yeah. we'll just we we look at what was uh, what we get, what's trending on Pinterest at the moment, because we have that be our content from two months from now, on Instagram, on Google My Business, on all the other social platforms, and then we make it today. Yeah. For Pinterest now, so then we say like, okay, next week maybe we're going to be doing what's I don't know what's in two weeks, what's in six weeks from now, like closer to Thanksgiving. Next month, pumpkin spice. It's going to yeah, be okay. all, people are probably looking at pumpkin spice. They're decorating their halls right now and looking at apple cider, pumpkin spice recipes. Cinnamon right. brooms. Yes. So we would make content around cinnamon brooms, post it in Pinterest, and then have that queued up for, Sorry, we, we just lost one of our cameras. That's weird. Oh, we lost Lauren's camera. Yeah. Switch with me, Lauren. Hey, look, it's Lauren. Hey. Except she's not there. Yeah. Do you want me to switch? Our, Great. Should Here, we I just can I can move over. Like I'll just no, no, no. Yeah, let's switch. Let's uh, yeah. switch there. Danon will be a dark black box. But hey, whatever. So no different be. than my heart. <coughs> Everyone, just, I'm gonna say hi to Dana. <laughs> Whoa, your head is small. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you were just um, you're louder, right? Yeah. Is that where you're switching? Yeah. Um, cool. Well, camera. Thanks for dying. Appreciate that. That's really nice of you. Whoops. I know. It wasn't your fault at all. It's, it's, uh. I mean, I wasn't going to take the blame even if you tried. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, how can I blame this on more? Come on a blank. Can't. That's fine. Nope. That's um, while he's doing that, keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So, uh, we would make the content. Uh, we, so we do, uh, we try to do three posts a week in general. So two that we've already predicted before and then one that's more relevant or something that comes up that's timely. Yeah. Maybe there's a sale that we're going to do. Maybe there's something that's uh, relevant to the news. Um, but for the most part, we use what's trending on Pinterest to predict us two weeks from now, or sorry, two months from now. Okay, that makes sense. And that's, again, like one of these things that I, I don't know many people that know that. I don't, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And But now, granted, I'm not, you know, you're dealing pretty exclusively on this kind of stuff in the retail space. So it's yeah. it's kind of necessary knowledge at that point, right? Yeah, and so like what you can do is when, going back to where Danon's wife was struggling with just this like content overwhelm, take what's working on Pinterest and then throw your picture on it. Right. It's a lot of inspirational quotes. It's a lot of, um, you know, funny memes. It's a lot of punny interactions. Right. So I'm you don't funny. have to invent the wheel. No, it's true, and that's a good point. Like, not everything has to be like a deeply well thought out, you know. Unless you're piece. going for like the vanity side. Uh, if we go back to the idea that because Pinterest is search based and social media, you're going to want your Facebook and Instagram to ultimately see that they're going to become search based platforms. So if you put the content out there for that, when someone is typing inside Instagram, I am looking for a supplement that solves, I don't know, beard stubble. I don't know what. <laughs> You are as a, uh, what do you call it, a supplementalist? A vitamin Vitamintologist. Yeah. Whatever that is, if someone's going to be searching that into Facebook and, and Instagram, because ultimately, I mean, they want to become WeChat. That's how individuals use that platform. Mm -hmm. So if you can anticipate that coming out, build your content around what's coming versus what you need to do. Otherwise, it's just vanity numbers. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. My voice is very much too loud. Which one are you? Uh, I think I'm number two now. Is that three? Go ahead and say something. Hello. Okay, that's good. That's good. her. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'll just talk a little bit further away from the mic. Nice. Sorry about the uh, technical difficulties here, folks, but uh, you're just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it could be worse. It could be uh, worse. We could have lost a camera. As mentioned, very, very high level of responsibility coming from this room right now. Yeah. This is also the first time you've had three cameras. So literally yeah. it is the first time we've That's done true. a three camera setup. Yeah. So, so it is you're actually making me your fault. Well, hold on. <laughs> How did he get it back to my fault? This you have a Goldie Bear situation. Okay, look, Goldilocks. No, Goldilocks. Goldie Bear. Goldie Bear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Goldie Bear and the three locks. Yeah. <laughs> is I'm that like the fish? <laughs> like, like, oh, like one locks? was one. This was too loud. This one's too soft. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Porridge. Um, <laughs> Okay, next subject. Okay, uh, so no, no, no. That Pinterest point is brilliant. So it's a way is, to yes. kind of be a bit ahead of the game. Um, and then what we were going to talk about, I think, right following that was the point of, okay, so you now know what you're supposed to be writing about. 
And I guess in some ways that could make it a lot easier in terms of the amount of time it takes from conception all the way to post made done, right? Yeah. But let's say that we've got someone who's already a little bit, you know, overwhelmed on everything else. What would you suggest them doing to utilize someone else to make this happen? Uh, you, you can, I mean, we work with individuals that are offshore. So we have virtual assistants that are abroad that have, um, I mean, virtual assistants isn't even describe it well like these are yeah. social media experts right this is something that they've gone to school for this is something that they have years of experience on and this is something that they can create so we'll have like content calendars made sometimes for smaller brands for a month out in advance you just spend four hours and go to um answer the public do you know what answer the public is no oh yes this is great you don't know what content to use you go to answer yeah. the public and you just type in any topic. So whatever your seed keyword is that you're ranking for on Amazon, you type mm -hmm. that in, and then you're gonna see a tree of every like who, what, where, when, and why, and then branches of those different topics. So if you're talking about like headphones, who wears headphones? Oh and then it's gonna have all these questions for you. And if you just answer each question with a post, you're done for 60 days. Wow. That, that just made the problem of where to get and how to create content just solve that problem yeah for everyone yeah that's a lot everyone simpler. um okay cool so then again let's say i'm trying to give you a blog, to blog oh <laughs> or you can hire mongoose <laughs> media and we can oh, do it for oh, you yeah. you guys actually do work for other people oh, oh okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> uh. but like the other thing too is just one other <laughs> you're a fractional cmo not a fictional cmo <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she yeah. talks about cmoing but that's it is cmoing a term probably not right I mean, I, mean, I hope fine. it only it means what be. I think it means because it, it could mean something very different. Okay, I'm going to well, let your imagine and imagination run wild on that imagine one. Imagine <laughs> I, can I do plug one other tool that we use that we really like? Yeah. Um, have you heard of Jarvis? I, I mean, I've seen uh, Iron Man. Iron Man, yeah. yeah. No, so it's an it. AI tool that we use. It stopped so reading the internet in 2019. Have I know an it sounds English so, accent. Uh, no, but you can give it whatever personality you want to. So oh, one of our awesome. brands that we work with sells meat based out of Texas. So we it always say like witty cow. cowboy for oh. all of our content. Yeah, that's awesome. So when we're looking for some of our like long form content, especially things that are like a thousand words. Um, this is a separate one that we've done. We've, we'll put that information in and I have blog articles for additional content. Say so you're adding it to the website. If you had a different website and you were doing these content pieces, I wrote a blog about one ingredient in one of our clients products and it's already on the first page of Google. Wow. That was written in 30 minutes using Jarvis as an AI system. You cannot be hundred percent dependent on AI. You have to have a human evaluate it and adjust it because it writes one word at a time. Here's what I'm hearing right now. You need a fictional, I mean, a fractional. <laughs> <laughs> you need a fictional CMO. Yeah. You need that a way they can do the CMOing for you. Exactly. Because I would have never, like, I used to be, I used to do local marketing. So, like, I haven't done it in many years. So, the mm -hmm. Google business was very familiar to, familiar to me. <laughs> So here's the Familial. problem. It is Friday at 3.14 p.m. right now. How long have um, you been? It's been a long day. It's, it's been only a been 35 minutes. I'm not even talking about just this thing. It's been a long week. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> oh, no. He was Dana, saying that he had carry. a previous oh, yes. experience in local in local search Yeah, yeah. So optimization. Like we, we came from um, local SEO at that time is what, it, what I called it into Amazon. Mm -hmm. And my, my prior knowledge of local SEO is what made us wildly successful on Amazon. It's because before anyone knew to be SEOing their Amazon mm -hmm. pay, uh, listings, mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. I even Which tried sounds... HTML. I tried to do it with HTML Wow! in, in some places. Wow. So it, it made us super successful because nobody else was doing that. Um, but as we all know, the game has changed and it's always going to change, it's always going to be changing. So I'm, I'm far removed from the arena that you're in now mm. and I would have never have known nor have even thought to look for those sorts of things. I didn't know about Pinterest, yeah, but not to like the degree. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I look for my couch cushion covers on there. Probably. 60 days to 90 days before you actually purchase your couch cushion covers. I'm just kidding. You're going to have to check that out. And I see. don't actually. Yeah, you're gonna have to, we're going to have to pay a lot of attention. To I'm going to order you couch cushion covers with our faces on them. That's going to be awesome. Yes. But they have to be for the back, not the butt. Yeah, I'm not letting you sit that, on our yeah, face. No, that's going to be weird. 
just I, I the turn of some of these things. Yeah. Like where they could have gone. <laughs> Why we do we have it's guests Friday. that are like us? It's <laughs> the, Friday. The, 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 yeah, it is Friday. Yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, face gets G -G -G okay. Next thing. Anyhow, the point is, is that <laughs> your your knowledge is far more valuable than the time that it would cost me to go and even figure this stuff out. Yeah, Which is why a fractional CMO makes sense for a lot of businesses right. because you get my experience or other fractional CMOs experience where they're so much involved in the game of marketing. Like I have to stay on top of, this is just easy stuff for me. The hard right. stuff is iOS 15 is coming out. How yeah. iOS 14 right. and 14 5 have disrupted the Facebook marketplace. Like it's right. completely annihilated yes, Facebook everything was that's really happened. really upset about it too. Yeah, they were <sighs> not, uh, you know, they were friends. Snapchat's before. not mad though. Snapchat is crushing it. People started to diversify their ads across other social media channels. And we have campaigns on Snapchat that are doing six and seven return on ad spend. Hmm. And if you have a successful campaign on fa Facebook, if you are running PPC campaigns outside of Amazon, you can take that and translate it so often to, to Snapchat, especially if you have user generated content. Hmm. It's just, okay. it's a platform that if you can do Facebook ads, if you can do Amazon PPC, it's, um, and I didn't come up with this. Someone else said, they said it's like graduating college and then going back to kindergarten. The Snapchat ads <laughs> platform is so ridiculously easy. It's and kind of like probably Amazon PPC back in 2015 kind of thing. Yeah, Fair. or Pinterest in what, 20, 2012, I mean, 13? I, I still like think that. Pinterest is a pretty interesting ads platform to go off of because we, you have like act alike audiences and things of that nature. But uh, when we, so we got invited to it when they were beta testing it. Ooh. And we had, we got, Literally, we spent pennies. We would spend like six yeah. cents a month and get hundreds Jesus, of thousands of crazy. impressions. And we yeah. would make thousands of dollars in sales because some, it got on some board of Sun Group that was in Pakistan that would buy mm. hundreds of dollars of our product at a time. Done. Yeah, so we. Well, you're talking about like efficacy of a platform, whereas I'm I'm trying to defer just to like the maturity. ease of use. Okay, yeah, fair okay, enough. Yeah, okay, sure. But yeah, no, I mean, Pinterest, it's still, it's not a very competitive platform. You right. still get lower cost CPMs, cost per 1,000 impressions. Mm -hmm. But I have seen that individuals on Snapchat tend to spend more money as a whole than buyers on Facebook. And again, it goes back to the interruptive huh. marketing thing that you don't necessarily know about. So if I can jump on that a little yeah, bit, because when someone comes to Amazon, they're coming to shop. Their yeah. credit card is out. They have intent on buying something specific. When you're driving down the street and you see a billboard, that's interruptive marketing because you're not on the road to look at those billboards. I oh, I yeah. see. Okay. If you're on it, Facebook, it you're looking at dog photos. It could also be piss you off marketing. Um, not if you're relevant. But hold on. Actually, something I've been really, since iOS, what I've been really honing in on more is, um, again, this didn't come from me. This was um, Angela. She's based in Australia. She said that your creative, before you used to be able to put your creative out there, you knew who your audience was and your target audience was like, yes, that's what I want. See this, buy this right now. Boom. <laughs> that was now, a high five for those of you that just listening. Yeah. yeah. No, um, they saw it. Don't worry. Oh, did they? I don't know. What well, I mean, for the. Oh, we audio, saw it. Our live listeners. audience yeah. saw it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no, so before you'd have, you could just put your shiny object in front of your target audience and your target audience would want to respond. Now with how your audiences are so diluted and you don't have as much data available to you to optimize the audience, you have to have a creative that attracts your ideal audience to you. So you have these broader audiences and you have something that's so intrinsically for that ideal person that they are like, yes, that's what I want, but you're equally repelling people because you want to tell someone this is not for you as much as you want to say this is for you. Right, mm -hmm. because if you're paying also clicks, if we're talking ads, you mm. do not want people clicking that are not relevant. Absolutely not. Yeah. And if we know anything about Facebook and Google, and Amazon is that if you want to pay for clicks, they'll get you clicks. Yeah, they'll get you. But that's all clicks. they'll get you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. Um, for those that are doing Facebook ads and you are not doing Snapchat ads, I recommend just you know dabbling a little bit. Put maybe like five percent of your budget. Do some tests. You can do audiences as low as five dollars a day. Right. Use campaigns that have been proven to work for you on Amazon or on Facebook and translate them over. If you have user okay. generated content, if you have review videos, throw those on. Yeah. Maybe throw in some emojis on the copies. Uh, that's uh, on the copy that's on top of the video, right. but mm -hmm. you don't have to do a lot more to test a new channel that is working really, really well. So while Facebook is upset with everything that's happened with like Adsmageddon. <laughs> Adsmageddon, nice. Yeah. 
Um, Who's coining terms now? Oh, damn You're it. like, no, who was that? That wasn't me. That wasn't no, me. I came up with something else that I thought, no, I... I said coronials. This Coronials. is a separate conversation. Oh that would God, be my daughter. Awesome. <laughs> Terrifying yeah. concept, but awesome. Yeah. Well, because I'd heard what zennials were. And I was like, well, okay, cool. Anyone born during the pandemic, you were a coronial, coronial. baby. Coronials, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, if those are disrupted, you can look at diversifying. But if you're not even on those platforms, then don't sweat. Snapchat's a really easy platform to jump onto. Right, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was, I think we like went around in the large loop i don't know where we're supposed to come back to i don't know where we started or where we are but i don't know i I do know though that like from a value perspective though i think that it's really interesting because we've been talking to paul and rochelle about definitely doing some kind of a segment and i definitely think you should be part of it (laughs) (laughs) well i'm close by so yeah which means we could have you in studio which is so awesome with a working camera (laughs) (laughs) sorry let's just cut over to me real quick (laughs) (laughs) Now a word from our sponsors. No, we don't have sponsors. I don't know why I said we that. We are the sponsors. It was, it was sort of um, disruptive, yeah. Um, that was no, disruptive so, marketing. Yeah, for, not interruptive. Well, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think the, the point here is that there's, um, there's so much out there that's available to you when it comes to marketing. Mm. And um, most business owners can't take it on themselves. Right. right. So right. we're hiring a fractional CMO or hiring someone that stays on top of these different pieces and can allocate resources according to what's working, mm-hmm. can turn off audiences, can amplify content that you've already got going, can syndicate your content, all your efforts already, put those on different channels. You can have someone do that for you that has the experience or delegate it out to their team. Right. Yeah, and it's kind of like, like almost like a little, you know, business fundamentals monologue here. It's almost like you gotta look at it from the bottom up because it's sort of like, okay, you start with a good product. Once you have a good product, uh, on Amazon at least, you have mm-hmm. a good product, you make sure that people can find that product on Amazon by having good keywords. And then from there, you should definitely, as a first step, master Amazon PPC. That should be the first you master. Mm-hmm. And then once you've done that though, we're no longer at the point where that is good enough. Also, another thing that kind of happened as a side to that, you have to make sure that you are playing with your money intelligently. You can't just like dump everything in and leave yourself no room for expansion because if your profit margin is that razor thin, you're not making it so you can go out and do some of these things that you're talking about here. Mm-hmm. Let alone hire hire her. And that's, that's where I'm getting with this because you have to have enough room in your business to make it possible to bring on not just staff because the problem with staff here is that unless you're hiring someone who is an expert at that specific thing, who are they going to lean on for our, for training? They're going to lean on you. And if you don't know what the hell you're doing, yeah. you you're don't up time. shit creek. That's right. So point being is whether it's a fractional CMO who's going to do your CMO <laughs> for you <laughs> um, or you know someone who's going to help you design a website or something like that, whatever. Whatever's going on, you need to make sure to reach out and bring in you know, teammates that can actually yeah. push forward things because you don't you don't have the time or so part of the CMO role is also hiring those spots or resourcing those pieces. So mm. like part of my job is to be a conversion architect. I have to care what happens after the click. Mm-hmm. If you're just a media buyer, you don't care what happens after the click. You just need leads. You just need traffic and visibility on your website. But as a CMO or as someone that's in that higher level position, you find the individuals that have a proven record of doing what they do. Because the worst thing is you spend two thousand, three thousand dollars on a landing page, mm-hmm. and then you find out that like it's not optimized for mobile. Right. Oh my god, that's a great. You way don't to, have yeah. a transitional call to action. Actually, this was something that I don't know if you're using this, but a lot of what I have found to be true with Amazon business owners I have met when they go off platform and they diversify where they're selling their products they don't have transitional call to actions. They're so used to being in a demand-based marketplace that they're not needing to do interruptive marketing, that they're saying, hey, buy this right now, but sometimes you just need to give a little value or have a lead magnet or some reason to capture that information because if you're not generating leads, you can't monetize them. Yeah, that that goes right over to the shop, the three Shopify stores that we built and did basically nothing with. So so to make sure that I'm kind of like tracking with exactly what you're saying there, it's sort of like, okay, cool, you've attracted them, Facebook ad, shot, uh, you know, some kind of ad, Snapchat, mm-hmm. like you're saying, and now you've somehow gotten email address, some other form of, you know, Hopefully, way to warm them up. So most you just, of the time people don't do that. They bring them to their website. They get them to leave the platform. 
they're on the website and they're like, mm, I'm not ready to buy. Right. Especially okay. on the higher ticket items. Yeah. So then you're talking about content on that page to keep warming them up or are you talking, no, you need to make that next step and get some kind of contact information in some way so yeah. you can continue warming The that. second part. So okay, what good. I call a transitional CTA, a transitional call to action is you're saying, hey, maybe you're not ready to buy, but this is something that you as an identified user that's interested in my product would like to have. Let's go back to the supplements uh, issue. We'll say it's supplements for, what did we say, beard, beard growth? Uh, beard stubble <laughs> removal or something like that. Sure, beard stubble removal. He's really unsure about what it really was for, so whatever, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Well, you gate something that in exchange for their contact information so that you own them, they're in your ecosystem because that's the biggest thing about Amazon. You don't have their information. That's right. Um, you bring them in and then maybe you're like the three mistakes people make when buying uh, beard oil. Okay. So you're basically, and it's, 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 you're creating a lead magnet yes. at that point. So you're pulling together a lead magnet and probably multiple lead magnets because you never know what is specifically going to translate with that particular person. I would say in a perfect world, you have a different lead magnet or a different, different transitional call to action for every product and every page on your website. If mm. someone's on a collections wow. page, a lot. it is could, a lot. It could be a lot. For an individual, it's a ton. Yeah. But for someone who has the resources or someone who has the direction, you start with one product and then I recommend you start with one collection page because I think collection pages get no love when Google ends up giving most attention to it because they have so many more products connected to it. What do you mean by a collection page? So if you sell a whole bunch of different supplements, it's your supplements homepage. Okay, product that, okay collection. got it, I don't yeah. see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, product collection, thank yeah. you. Right now, and it's you made the point of it could seem overwhelming, but it's really not only because it's not like you have to build out the entire resource vault before you see any gain. No. You're seeing gain every single one you build out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's not like it has to be okay. Cool, I'm going to build out my entire website before I ever. And you don't do have anything. to create new content. You just right. pull content and curate it so it's delivered on a silver platter for someone because mm -hmm. you already know this stuff. And if it's easy as like hey, take this like three second quiz. You know that someone needs to take it so they can be identified which beard oil or which beard supplement makes the most sense for them. You put that on that collections page. We should have chosen a different product. I'm <laughs> struggling, like I don't have a beard. Well, I mean, I shaved it off so you can't see it today. Yeah. Uh, oh, it is on me, okay, yeah, see, yeah. beard. <laughs> No Lack beard. of beard. No Lack beard. Of beard. <laughs> yeah. She didn't take her I beard get... supplement oil. Yeah, that's face. right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so that makes sense. So it's sort of like you have to warm them up. You have to warm that content up, That not that content up, that individual up. So After you've captured their information, that's yes. Right. Yeah. 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 But if you don't have their information, it's completely irrelevant. They came to your website, they left, and based off of how first-party data and third-party cookies are going if you don't own that email if you don't have that first party data it's useless you that would spent be my that money. knife website yeah no i know right yeah and that's the thing about it is it's like amazon has been cracking down on this a lot and we're kind of i'm going to put a little bit of plug for bullfrog data because and this is only really ap applicable to existing managed by stats users who came in before i think it was the 28th of last month yeah. I think it's I almost been a day. month. Basically, Bullfrog Data prior to that can get all of the email addresses, phone numbers, or at least 50% of your Amazon user base. So the that if you fall into that category, you should take advantage of that now to do exactly what you're talking about because now you have their contact info. You can then start warming these guys up for repeat buyers of some other product or if you have a consumable, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. Just a quick little statistic from the CMO, the fractional CMO. Oh, yeah. uh, your welcome series should generate about 6% of your income. So if you're not collecting those emails, you're literally leaving 6% of your income on the table. Okay. Wow, okay. That's a little yeah. bit mind blowing. Yeah. Okay, so Maybe then I feel a little less of a man right now. I don't know. Six <laughs> percent less. Six <laughs> percent less. Six percent less of a man. <laughs> um, okay, so then, so yeah, so whether it's utilizing your existing contacts, bullfrog data, or it's inserts, or it's like what you're talking about, um, curating content, throwing it together on a silver platter right in front of their face when you know that they're looking for something related to that. Those are those things that you need to do to actually be taking advantage of off Amazon to drive your Amazon sales. Or if you've already kind of got the ranking going well on Amazon, then mm -hmm. you just pivot it to your Shopify and you're making a higher profit margin. So mm -hmm. these are, it's funny because like we keep talking about how we want to like build out some of this 
not like a resource fault. It's it's more like a a set of service providers that really do a good job at this and yeah. know what they're talking about. And this is kind of that sort of thing that we why I'm enjoying this so much because <laughs> Okay, good. We're talking one to one of us. Yeah. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Danon's really pissed off. He's yeah. like, I'm not a man. No, I'm Danon's a manly less man. Six percent less of a man. <laughs> I'm gonna take more of my beard oil fr- face <laughs> I'm gonna, supplements. I'm gonna put my beard oil every oh never mind. <laughs> <laughs> you vitamin S you <laughs> vitaminology. Um yeah, so okay, good. Now again, to kinda because we've already, we're already, what is it? 52. Uh, 52 minutes into this. So wow. I know. Yeah, it's been know. almost an hour. So I don't want to go too much deeper into the weeds in any Fair. of this. Be only, not on, not because I don't want to go into it, but because I don't want this to be an hour and a half, two hour long podcast. Yeah. Fair. And I know, you know, it's Friday. You drove out here from Orlando. So I'm yeah. sure you have other things you want to possibly do. Maybe. Fair. Who knows? Well. But. So we are definitely going to figure out, you know, how to put you in front of our audience a lot more. (laughs) But um, I would say, is there any, like, last tiny little gem you want to throw at someone before we depart? Don't coin terms when you don't know what you're talking about. And that applies to Dana, not to you. Oh, you were talking to her? I thought you were talking to me. I know you were looking at her, but I I was pretty sure you were talking to me. It's okay. okay. We're we're going to talk to the guest. Go ahead. Yeah. (laughs) So last little gem. Um, I would just say again, if so maybe you're not at the place where you have another website. I'm going to throw a different resource. We've talked about Google My Business. We've talked about like using Pinterest to generate social media content for you or just content in general that you can also use on your Amazon posts Mm -hmm. Um, as well as uh, the long topic we just discussed that's totally left my mind. Beard... uh Beard no. oil. Yeah. Oh no, transitional calls to action. Like you have to own your first party data. I knew you'd data. remember before oh the gosh. silence went too long. You have to own that data. If you don't own that data, you're losing out on selling to your ideal customer. Yeah. Right. Um, the fourth little thing that I would just say is there's a website called Help a Reporter Out. And this is great to use if dot, you- Is that dot .com? Help yes. a Reporter Out dot com? It's or just Google, Haro, whatever. H-A-R-O. It stands for Help a Reporter Out. Yeah. You can set up a free account and then you can say what type of- um, news articles you want to be featured in Mm. so you can get an email sent to your address every day spend an hour a week no spend 10 minutes a week create one little pitch of how you want it and then you can position yourself to show up in authoritative magazine authoritative magazines linking back to your amazon listing so what i was saying earlier is like i'm in refinery 29 i'm in thrive global i'm um in several other publications from a free resource where all we did was a reporter says hey i'm writing an article about this topic hey, I'm writing a gift guide about rosewater-based products. If you own a rosewater toner as mm-hmm. one of the products that you sell in your Amazon listing, you can reach out and give them three or four benefits of why your product is good, and they can list it in their guides. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so no what website we're going to do... Yeah, right. Now, what I think we're going to do here, because she's mentioned, obviously, a couple really cool resources here. We'll list them below. Yeah. So oh, and I have about... an affiliate link for Jarvis if you want 10,000 free words. I like it. Okay, we're going to list all this stuff below for sure. Um, Good. That's awesome. So then, obviously, we've we've covered a wide landscape here. Um, We're also going to put below a way to contact you. (laughs) Sure. And we'll we'll carrier pigeon is ideal. Carrier pigeon. Yeah. Okay. Good. You could also just drive to Orlando and just keep searching until you find her. Well, I mean, you could just look at my Google My Business (laughs) because I show up. So, what's the name of your firm? A uh, mongoose media. Okay, mongoose media. Beautiful. I'll okay. fox you. <laughs> so bad. Goodness. We're gonna definitely push this awkward silence a little further. I'm not saying a word. Shh. Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. It's gonna probably show in the afternoon, but it's okay. I'm not gonna hold it against you. <laughs> Hey, it's um, in the evening somewhere. Yeah. That's true. That's very true. Um, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> choo, choo. I think it's time to go. <laughs> yep. Bye, everybody. Thanks <laughs> for <Ciao>. watching. <laughs> Good. Well, so depending on where you're saying this, whether it's, uh, you know, oh, my God, do not, do not switch away. It's a different nope. camera. Dang. Yeah. Um, so if you're seeing this on YouTube, obviously, like, share, do all that stuff. Subscribe and turn on the bell. Wait. Leave comments with four words. 
Okay, this is the one thing. If you want to help this podcast or if you want to help any small business owner, the best thing you can do is on any platform, you want to leave a comment with at least four words. Why four words? Three words is a sentence, subject, verb, object in the English language. The one that you speak three quarters of. Uh Uh-huh. Um, if you add a fourth word, it's a That's qualitative word. That's the problem. Word. He only uses three sent- three word <laughs> sentences. Yeah, and it's got to be four because <laughs> okay. you're telling the algorithms an opinion. I really like this. I don't like this. I hate you guys. Oh, my goodness. Rude. So, no, no, I'm saying if they're going to write that, don't just write, I hate you. Help us out. Say, I hate you guys. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> There's. I mean, they can't uh, discriminate so much against like hateful and uh, positive notes, they see like four, oh, someone really has an opinion on this. This is interesting. This is relevant. I'm going to show it to more people like oh them. God. Huh. So We're going to probably words. just have you come out here like every other day. I'm just, but the, again, might, this like, is my role. So we're, you're saying things. we're touching a lot. I'm barely touching anything that I do. Like yeah. this is just like, so these are like, you know, the Monday morning checkoffs. Huh. Wow. There's a lot of other things that we could go way deeper in, but this is already a lot for you guys. But that's because in my role, I'm responsible for knowing and staying on top of these and implementing these type of tactics. Again, pointing out how important it would be to have somebody like you or you instead of somebody (laughs) like me (laughs) running that stuff. You can only wear so many hats. I always recommend you have like your lawyer, your marketer, and your uh, accountant in place because those are the three most expensive tools besides you and your time. So get yourself a fractional CMO and stop being a fictional CMO. Jesus I had to. I had to end on the. I'm going to get back to the sign off here. Okay, cool. <laughs> so four letter uh, comments <laughs> on four words. On four four words. Wow. Four letter. Four letter Don't comments. say love. Don't just say love. <laughs> love. Right. Um, yeah. So four word <laughs> comments. Jeez Louise. And equally, you two better respond back with a question. With a question? These are How social media platforms. Me? People come to socialize. You can't just say, thanks, start a conversation. You can't boost the algorithm even more. God, I feel like such an idiot over here. No. I do. I feel like I thanks actually made a beard supplement. Thanks for attending our podcast. You're welcome. He's Curtis 6% most of a man. AMZ yeah. stupid real talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, AMZ so. two dumb guys. <laughs> AMZ dumb Duh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new name of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you introduce it? The Damon name of the, con- the Curtis podcast? Uh, I don't know that we actually introduced it with I the name. Oh, I you actually did? did. No, okay. I do remember that because I remember not fucking it up. <laughs> oh, okay. you got my name right too. I did. Yeah, I know. Do you want to try again? Petrulo. Well, yeah, d- there you go. Hold on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at the Italian he in the audience. backwards because her husband is back over there, and he's Italian, yeah. like real Italian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's, <laughs> this has gone too to go. far. Goodbye, This has everybody. gone far too far. So if you're on Facebook, um, what should they do? <laughs> Leave a review. <laughs> Leave a review. Leave a review on Google My Business. Leave a review on Facebook. Copy and paste it. If you exactly. have more than five reviews on Google My Business, by the way, that increases your authority as a brand. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, good. So do all we those things. We should talk more about this. you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to definitely talk more to you. Wait, I can. I have a checklist of things you can do to optimize your Google My Business. Like this is spend 10 minutes and do these four things. Oh, that's Some, awesome. Something to give away, you mean? And I mean, you should make you sure to it. capture yeah. their email address. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Let's, let's do a PDF giveaway of, of that checklist. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that'll 100%. be appreciated. Yeah. I will do someone's Google My Business too if you want. I will set up their Google My Business for them. If you want to give away something. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think that's a great idea. We'll do that. But you have to comment with four words. In Uh, order to be entered into this. Minimum of four words. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll do someone's Google My Business audit or set them up for them. Cool. So cool. This has been awesome. Okay, good. Lauren. You're welcome. Yeah, no, seriously. Thank you very much. This has been, um, one of our most educational podcasts, I would say, um, yeah, mainly because you carried these two dumb idiots. Along I with don't you think for that's the ride. true. <laughs> yeah. That's not true. I just well, talked about things you don't Well, you didn't make a beard cover. supplement. So. I am here for comic relief basically only. And uh, cord navigation. Oh, cord navigation. Look and at that you should oh, see, Can we you just end quit. the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stop it. <laughs> Thank you all for showing up. We really do appreciate you hopefully sticking around for this over one hour podcast. Well, if they didn't stick around, they don't get the free Google My Business setup. Oh, my God. Did we seriously lose the second camera? We did. (laughs) We're getting out of here. This has been great. Thank you guys so much. That's what happens when you run a long podcast. Here, come over here and say bye. Bye. Ciao.